So one of the big problems is that uh, we don't really think about the stuff that we listen. Uh, so for example, uh, when uh, two cars crash, they make this distinctive sound, it's very easy to recognize, it's immediately going to grab our attention. Um, but when you don't really have that sound and you just look at the picture, you might not even see that the two cars have collided. It's not going to make something that's uh, visually so uh, abrupt as the sound itself. Uh, so that's one application that we're really pushing for, uh, doing a lot of uh, security surveillance kind of things. You can detect gunshots, you can detect uh, incidents in intersections, people screaming, uh, all sorts of things like that, which are very easy to uh, detect in the audio domain. They're extremely hard to detect in the video domain. There's a thousand different ways that two cars can crash, but they always make the same sound. Um, Likewise, we can um, uh, use uh, microphones to uh, just detect how people use spaces and try to optimize them. Uh, I, I can tell if a lot of people are waiting at the lobby for the elevators, uh, and it's much easier to do that using sound than having a camera and like counting people and things like that. So uh, there's a lot of applications where we don't really think of them as being audio applications, uh, but the audio ends up being a very easy solution to uh, a very easy solution to the problem. If you really look at this, this becomes an artificial intelligence problem. How do you make a machine really react to external stimuli and you know, develop a sense? Uh, and we all know that artificial intelligence is not something that's going to be solved in the next, next 20 or 40 years. It's something that's going to take a long time if, if it ever gets solved. Uh, so I know that in the long run there's always going to be some problem which is going to be unsolvable. Uh, one example which is one of my favorites is teaching a computer how to listen to music. Uh, getting a computer to understand emotion and understand what the composer uh, is trying to uh, convey and all those things, they're extremely hard problems and I don't think they're going to be solved, at least in my lifetime. Uh, so at least that gives me hope that I'll have something to work with uh, for a long time. My undergraduate studies were in electronic music and at least back then the big thing in electronic music is to actually uh, synthesize sound to fool people into thinking that, those, that you're generating real instruments or things like that. Um, so I was very good at actually making sounds uh, but after a while it becomes boring. You know how to do it. Uh, the state of the art is pretty good. When you hear synthetic recordings nowadays uh, you don't really know if it's a real string orchestra or a fake one. You know you can fool people. So it's kind of a solved problem in a sense. Um, so you know, as, as, as I progressed, I wanted to do a new challenge, I wanted something else, and uh, the thing that really uh, uh, caught my interest was trying to analyze sound and seeing what, what information I can get out of it. And it first started by just analyzing music, thinking, well, you know, can I find out uh, how people are performing music, uh, what piece this person is singing, or how can I make a computer accompany a, a human performer by listening at the performance. And uh, after that I realized that there's much more than just understanding music, there's like this whole set of real sounds that's, that carries immense information that could also be analyzed, and uh, I slowly got hooked into that.